pleasure of talking with um, Donato Kininga Pasili. He is Vice President of the World Academy of Art and Science and is the vast representative to the UN in Geneva. He is an expert in crisis resolution, development cooperation, public and labor affairs. He currently serves as Senior Advisor for Peace and Security at the United Nations Institute for Training and Research, UNITAR. Until recently, he coordinated the Fragile States and Disaster Response Group at the International Labour Organization, ILO. He specialized in promoting crisis response programs and initiatives in the wake of a major humanitarian crisis, addressing governance and employment deficits. Today, we will draw on his wisdom as a change maker with a human and humanity focused approach and discuss topics from the current COVID-19 crisis to home and co-learning on a societal level. All right, we're very excited to have you here. And thank you, thank you. me too. <laughs> Why don't we start with the, um, with the COVID crisis? Because I think you have a lot um, to say about this, as you already mentioned in your newsletter. Well, uh, I'm not a health specialist. And uh, the newsletter of the World Academy of Art and Science obviously talks about different issues different interdependent issues. Uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, is uh, a demarcation line for humanity. Uh, so this is why we are all confronted and the Academy, the World Academy is confronted with because scenarios are changing. I mean, uh, the, 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 uh, the way we live is changing uh, as, as we talk. And therefore we cannot, we cannot project a future that is based on the same assumptions that we had two months ago. Uh, we have to uh, adapt, but more than adapt, I think we have to transform. Uh, it's not uh, with a mitigation effect, it's not with an adaptation effect that we can solve our problems. We have to uh, really understand what the causes of uh, the disruption are and uh, and change the development model uh, if we want to survive as a species and if we want other species to survive with us. Uh, so the, the real element of, of COVID, in my views, is not the uh, health issue, is the, let's say, communication issue. Hmm? Uh, because the, the lack of communication the misconceptions, the underestimations, and the lack of communication, the silence, uh, has triggered or have triggered the crisis itself. Now, if we uh, limit ourselves to the mechanicistic approach, that is to say, what do we have to do now for containment, for social distancing, for uh, having you know coping with the, with the uh, health crisis we do not understand and we do not uh, tackle the root cause the root cause is really misconceptions underestimation uh, and lack of communication so uh, as humans we have to uh, change our habits and it's not so much uh, the uh, uh, humans per se is nature that drives us in this in this way i mean nature tells us that if we want to preserve this planet um, we have to occupy space in a different way hmm? so you see that nature is reclaiming uh, space you know you have the uh, uh, dolphins in the in the lagoon of venice you have uh, uh, the bears and deers and, uh, and wild animals reoccupying land that has been expropriated <laughs> from them. Uh, now, why are they doing this? They're doing this to, to tell us that, uh, again, this is not our exclusive land, is not our exclusive space, is not our exclusive, exclusive sea. Huh? Uh, we, have to think, we have to think differently. We have to change things around. Uh, they are the heroes of our time. Uh, nature is the hero of our time. So, and they communicate with us. Again, we, they do not have this problem of underestimation. They actually, they immediately see the opportunity 
to reclaim and to change nature around, uh, uh, to repopulate and to uh, uh, recreate an ecosystem that we need to redevelop. We need to redevelop. Again, if we continue to say uh, life will go on again uh, as, as before, uh, uh, if we will restart with the same practices, if we will exploit nature, if we will destroy our environment, there is no hope for human species in general. Uh, uh, and so we, we need really to transform this, uh, to think a new development about a new development model, of course, that is based on equity, that is based on um, distribution of resources, uh, that is, uh, means access to people also, because access cannot be exclusive. So, uh, uh, land is not exclusive for you and me, uh, sea is not exclusive for you and me, it's for many people around the world, for the globe, uh, for the planetary. So this is a planetary momentum. This is why we call it in the, in the World Academy of Atom Science of that a planetary momentum to understand where, that now we have to make a change. Uh, we have to profit somehow of the events and have this, uh, um, scientific but intimate also uh, uh, resolution um, and, 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 uh, and change where we see an alternative model. The alternative model has to be based on, on as we said, uh, on, on access, but also access that is not exclusive, that is not a, one against the other one, but it's mutual. So it's based on mutual understanding. And this is a bit the answer, is the understanding, uh, understanding of uh, uh, the situation and ability to listen, to listen to nature as we are trying to do now, uh, but also listen to the fact that there are no, no planes over our heads, uh, that there are less uh, cars circulating, uh, but uh, we, we have to move on. Huh? I mean, a, again, it's not the economy, the triggering factor is uh, the uh, survival hmm, that we have to ensure. But in order to survive, we also need to share, uh, we need to understand, to make uh, ourselves in a position to say this is not for our exclusive interest. It's a community, it's a society, it's the world planet that needs this mutual understanding because uh, I'm not rich if you are not rich. Uh, I'm not healthy if you're not healthy. I'm, I, I cannot ensure my well-being if you cannot ensure your well-being. So it's a planetary scale uh, change that we have to impress on ourselves. So a real different uh, shift in, in, in gear and approach where we realize that the interdependencies are re the ones that regulate uh, the, uh, <laughs> um, the, the biological clock of our universe. Huh? Uh, so here we have to understand these interdependencies uh, 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 and then make sure that we, are, uh, we give access to others as we give it to ourselves to the limited resources uh, that are renewable, but are still limited resources that the planet can uh, can uh, share with us. Thank you very much. That that was a very round um, and whole answer to that uh, topic. I have a question. The, if I may break down our uh, structure already. Um, so you speak about this. Um, it, transformative change that should happen now how do you enable this change to actually happen how do you practically make it happen maybe not only you as a person but also we as a global community i think it's a matter of leadership in many ways that we have to assume uh, in ourselves no? uh, we are used to consider uh, the concept of leadership as uh, um, a unique, uh, a, a unique um, uh, um, characteristic or or, uh, or or charismatic aspect of individuals. Huh? 
uh, that's nothing to do with the leadership that we need to assume. Uh, the leadership we need to assume is a shared commodity, hmm? uh, is uh, a sense of responsibility that uh, I think young generations, uh, youth in general, has much more than adults <laughs> and much more than grown-ups. Uh, I mean, I mean, grown-ups in terms of, uh, uh, you know, people who are in charge, let's put it like that. Uh, I think that the youth has to really uh, move on, step on, hmm, and, and ensure that uh, not only they claim their future, they claim the present. Huh? Uh, so we should not talk so much about uh, uh, one, one day a week uh, where we don't think about our future. We should talk about every day about our present. Uh, and this is the, the ultimate recipe, is to make sure that you have uh, an intergenerational dialogue, but this has to be ensured. You have to defend those uh, species, again, I use this term, that are um, under threat, huh? and I'm talking also of the elderly, that they have so much to offer. Uh, and uh, we have to reconnect with our own roots, personal and societal roots, and, and see what is the kind of, uh, of, of, of uh, development that uh, for human security in the 21st century, we can ensure. So the human security we are talking about, um, us today is not uh, the absence of uh, weapons of mass destruction only or biological weapons is a uh, a sphere that relates to the individual as well and to the collective uh, capacity to create structures to create investments to create uh, common spaces for uh, uh, for us to live in so when you talk about the house for humanity I think we should talk, think about the planet as a house for humanity. Uh, it's not one village, it's not one house in, on, on a hill that can make the difference. It's the uh, house for humanity is a place where you can room around with freedom, with freedom uh, and as an individual, uh, not because you are born in one country or another, uh, but because you, you want to discover this world and this we are, we are meant to discover this world, but with respect, with uh, respect for nature, with respect for what is this shared commodity uh, that we can enjoy from, uh, if we are able to protect it. So protection uh, is, is another word, I mean protection uh, rather than prevention. Uh, again, we are talking of prevention so much um, because we think that preventing disasters, preventing catastrophes, uh, is better than the remedial action. Yes, of course, that's obvious. Uh, there is less cost, there is less cost in, uh, for human losses, for assets losses, etc. But protection is even more important than, than prevention. Uh, protection means understanding uh, what is really at risk. Uh, uh, and, and it's not necessarily uh, the, uh, um, the, um, the, the resources that are more endangered that are at risk, are the ones that sometimes we do not realize that are there. Think about your personal freedom. You would have never thought that you are now confined in your apartment or in your uh, studio, wherever you are, and you cannot go out. You would have ever thought of that? No, you would have think that maybe you can be hit by an avalanche or an earthquake could come uh, and, and destroy your, your house or something, but not that you were unable to get out of your home. So what do we need to protect is the, uh, sphere, the sphere, the, the freedom that the individuals should have huh? uh, and uh, understand the multiple connections that we have to ensure in order to have this personal freedom. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you also for bringing it back to um, this concept of own personal freedom and our own homes, because I think in this um, special times, 
everybody starts thinking about these things in a much more personal way. Maybe some people have thought about it before um, and have thought about societal levels of freedom, but now it's a, it's a much different discussion and a, and yeah. a more personal discussion, I think. Hmm. Um, with that, I think we're also very close to the discussion of home. And I wanted to ask you what home means for you and how your own home, but also other homes such as Home for Humanity have been um, a springboard and how you have been enabled or how you create enabling spaces for others. Again, a home is, uh, uh, is a place where you feel comfortable. Uh, comfortable means uh, a place where, they, where you can share uh, you can share affections, you, you can share uh, time, uh, most of your precious time, uh, but can be very much an open space as an indoor space. Uh, so the home is, uh, is not a, a solid construction, uh, is, uh, is really a, a, a something that is related to your sphere of uh, emotions, your sphere of affections, uh, your sphere of desires, uh, of uh, ambition uh, that you should have, that we should all have. Huh? Uh, so again, this has to do with this sense of respect. Uh, if I enter your home, if you enter my home, we enter with respect because it's something uh, that is sacred for our own uh, feelings, for our own uh, uh, conscience. So this kind of respect means uh, uh, also um, not intruding into the personal uh, sphere unless you are allowed to. Uh, so it's the, the home is something that you share little by little. Uh, you do not uh, open the door of your home like at the vernissage of the uh, or or a movie uh, premiere hmm? uh, that's another story uh, it's not that you you don't want to show uh, just the externalities you want to uh, show the intimacies of what is home uh, so home is something that you have to savor that you have to taste uh, little by little and uh, and uh, and therefore what is the condition to have uh, a safe home for all is that is based on solid ground, uh, on this solid ground of affections, uh, and that is based on the ability uh, to have dreams, desires, to say, I want to move to, uh, you know, uh, a safer land or, or a more beautiful place where I have a better view, huh? where I have a more positive outlook of, of, of uh, my present, of my future, and uh, where I can enjoy it with the people that I enjoy with. Uh, and where you, again, you can open up uh, with the uh, respect, uh, with the intimate uh, capacity to absorb also from others. Hmm? So when you receive someone in your home, uh, nobody comes normally empty-handed uh, if you if you offer lunch, dinner, or breakfast. Uh, so they come either with a flower or a bottle of wine or something, don't they? And this is practically in all cultures, in all parts of the world. Huh? You come with something. So when you come into a home, you come with the feeling that someone is opening his or her heart to you. That is... Uh, uh, is giving you something. So you have to be ready to give something in exchange. So home is, a, a, is in the sense, is a process of exchange, is opening to one another. There are many doors and windows in a home. So you can go back and forth, you can go outside, you can uh, peep out if there is a sunny day, you can stay indoor if it's raining or you can go outside, it's rainy as well. Uh, but the, the most important thing is that you uh, feel, as I said, comfortable, comfort. This is what home is, is comfort, stands for comfort. And there are levels of comfort. 
there are people who have who are dispossessed lots of people who are dispossessed they don't have that comfort so are we able in this moment uh, in in historical time to understand that more people require the same level of comfort or are we not able to do that if we are not able to do that uh, your comfort will be less and less uh, uh, applicable and less and less uh, uh, um, you know safe in many ways and less and less uh, enjoyable this is the word um, because again my comfort is related to your comfort is related to the comfort of the man in the street uh, uh, is related to the societal moves that we cannot prevent I mean, we took with so much discussion about migration, forced migration, uh, etc. Let's remember that we are inhabitants of the planet. Hmm? Uh, and uh, um, whether this is uh, a part of globalization or not, uh, this is less relevant. Uh, we don't have to, probably in the post COVID era, uh, we should not even use the word globalization. Uh, globalization is something of the past. Uh, now it's really the word, in my opinion, is interdependencies, uh, is the fact that you have to be conscious at a global level, uh, but also at local level, of the fact that you are conditioned in all your moves, in all your aspirations and ambitions, uh, uh, by the environment, the environment that surrounds you. So. It's not even a matter, again, of restoration of climate. I hear so much about restoration of climate, restoration of nature, restoration. It's not restoration of the world, even if I understand the concept that goes beyond the terminology itself. It's not a matter of semantics only, but the uh, word is not restoration. The word is protection. The word is, again, uh, understanding these interdependencies if we do not protect, if you do not protect what you have at home, you know, there will be a thief that comes and takes, you, takes it away from you. So you have to treasure your most valuables. And your most valuables are your affections, your ability to connect, and your ability to enjoy life in an open society, in an open world. Thank you very much. Um, the interdependencies that you mentioned are um, a big part of my own personal interest because I think um, in my own life and in this university life that we uh, currently enjoy, um, there are often there's a big focus of on specific topics in isolation, and you study some topic, and um, there are departments on one topic but not the other. Um, and I think in the real world, um, everything is interconnected. And only when you talk about these interdependencies, you can actually make a real um, impact and change because otherwise it's just not real. It's way too isolated for, for all of the consequences to be considered, I think. So that's um, a really interesting point for me personally. <coughs> um, now, the other point that you mentioned um, when we were talking about home and how a lot of people do not have a home and how that also affects every other person in the society, um, even to a global level. Um, uh, do you think that the home and the concept of home, whatever it is, even if it's not a physical home, but this uh, level of comfort um, enables people to... Um, to not only have ambitions, but um, produce or um, act on such ambitions. So do you think not having a home um, can stunt the learning of a person and the, the impact that a person may have? For sure. Uh, um, again, in different societies, nomadic societies might have a different concept from, from you. Uh, tribal societies have a different concept from me in many ways, but although we are all tribals one way or another, uh, I, I mean the, uh, uh, the impact 
that uh, the lack of a, a habitat eh, is not even a home, is a habitat, uh, a personal habitat. Um, the lack of that space, of personal space, of dignity that comes with it, eh, uh, of personal dignity, it, it hampers everything else. So you, you, uh, you cannot have a decent life. You cannot have uh, progression in life. You cannot have ambitions. You cannot have desires if you do not have a, a sense of dignity for yourself. Hmm? Because it's a matter of relation. You relate yourself to, towards others. How can you project yourself uh, uh, in, in a better life with uh, full enjoyment of, of many things if you do not have respect for yourself and for the others? So pers a personal habitat is what we need to create or we need all, all of ourselves. We need, we need to create for ourselves, but also for our neighbors. Um, and um, without that, there is no peace, uh, there, there, is no, there, there is no safety, and there is no ambition. You cannot have desires, you cannot have dreams, you cannot have uh, projects. Uh, you, have, uh, you live uh, day by day, that is also a way to survive, uh, but there is nothing you can share. Remember what I said to you, it's uh, the problem nowadays is a, is a problem of miscommunication, silence, inability to communicate with one another. And, and bear this, I will tell you an anecdote, a personal anecdote. Maybe this uh, gives you some ideas. Uh, you know, silence is a great conducive uh, force, strength, uh, 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 sorry, source of, of, of communication and silence. Um, many, many years ago, uh, when I was a, a junior United Nations officer, I was sent to Vietnam. And Vietnam was a country emerging from a long conflict, as you know. Uh, and uh, Hanoi, the capital of, uh, of the North, uh, at that time was really a secluded little place uh, with bicycles going around. Uh, there was uh, only the, the noise of uh, the, the bicycle rings. There were no cars. There was an old tram, a French tram that was going up and down you know, in, in Hanoi. And uh, I started meeting a lot of important people uh, and less important people because we were developing, we were helping develop, helping develop. Um, so we were doing some developmental programs. At some point, I was in a room with uh, an old gentleman, and uh, he started to uh, talk uh, in his own language. And uh, he, he knew many other languages, by the way. He certainly knew French. But he started talking to his language in his language, and I stopped talking in English. I started talking in Italian. Uh, <laughs> why? Because it was obvious. He wanted to communicate his own ways, his own feelings with gestures, with, uh, 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 with simple uh, manifestations of uh, uh, interest, basic manifestations of interest, a sense of respect towards a much younger, uh, much, much younger individual that was in his home in his own home. And at some point, there was a habit those days that you had always an interpreter next and, and writing a little book, every single word, huh? that this was also kept for future reference and, and who knows what for. Uh, at some point, he said, well, interpreters can go. Uh, we communicate well, me in Vietnamese, you in Italian. And we had a long silence. Uh, this gentleman, maybe you heard about him, he was General Jap. General Jap uh, was at that time the uh, Minister of uh, Economic Development of this country. But he is the man who actually who won the war in Vietnam. He is the man who uh, invented uh, this uh, incredible uh, ambush technique <laughs> that, that uh, actually defeated the American army. Uh, so what it means is that this uh, 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 old man, uh, very wise, 
uh, said uh, to me uh, at this point, he said, well, we can simply say, stay one next to the other one and in my home uh, and uh, have something to drink, probably a, a tea or something, I don't remember, <laughs> uh, and communicate and build trust. So the most important thing uh, for the humans can do with one another is to build trust. And in order to build trust, you need to listen and you need to understand you need to put yourself in the other person's shoes, understand his constraints, understand his environment. Uh, again, there's nothing wrong in being judgmental, uh, because if you're not judgmental, it means that you cannot create that essential synthesis in, in your own intellect that is cause and effects. Hmm? So you have to be judgmental, but the moment you're judgmental, you have to be ready to change your judgment. If you are not capable of changing your judgment, well, you lost it. Huh? So uh, th this is just one episode, but I could tell you many more uh, of long silences that I had uh, on planes with, uh, for instance, with uh, another a mentor of mine who, who was a uh, former... Um, former Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of, of Pakistan, uh, Sahabzada Yaqub Khan, when he was uh, the representative of the Secretary General for the Western Sahara, and I was uh, uh, his uh, special assistant many, many years ago. We used to fly over this berm, over this wall in, uh, in uh, Western Sahara, between Western Sahara and Morocco, a very, very long wall built by humans, to separate people, hmm? uh, but indeed uh, <laughs> uh, this separation was very artificial. Uh, probably these people belong to even the same tribes, uh, and people were meant to communicate and meant to to go across and not be rigidly separated by Burma. We had long silences over this Antonovs. Uh, planes, very noisy planes, uh, with a crew that we didn't even know where it was coming from. I think he said, these guys must be Etruscans, uh, because we didn't know uh, what nationality they were. You know, it was the time where you had these new nationalities coming up in Europe, and, uh, and a lot of services were delivered by these former uh, Soviet <laughs> companies, etc. But the silence that we had were made of uh, uh, contact, huh? of observation, observation. So again, the key to all is observation, uh, not just contemplation, observation, judgment, and refine judgment. If we are able to, to judge and refine our judgment, it's even better to then just abstain ourselves from judgment. Um, this is an intellectual process. We should not deprive ourselves of, of this ability. So this, I'm saying that because nowadays we have so much emphasis on politically correctness. And, and I think that this is wrong. Uh, uh, it's wrong if uh, uh, the most important thing that humans have to do is respect, huh? but not to be politically correct. Uh, politically correctness is, is flattening things, is, uh, is making you uh, unconscious and other people unconscious. You have to be extremely conscious, but to be judgmental does not mean that you are uh, lacking respect or that you are uh, lacking interest. So this is the, the difference. Let's consider that humans are very intelligent as animals, by the way, are very intelligent. And we should sometimes, we, we believe that they're less intelligent, that they have less capacities to, to have this you know, mental synthesis of cause and effect and, and change and change. Uh, but they are indeed, instead, they are very able to do so. Uh, and, and the problem is that leaders, contemporary leaders in many places, don't want that. They want to control. They want to impose control. It's much easier to impose control than to give individual freedom to people to judge and refine the judgment. But this is not the way that we're going to change the world. 
is only if you have a societal change, is only if you have a, a transformation hmm, uh, of, of uh, the concept of leadership where it becomes a shared commodity, where everybody is leader in its own uh, practice, in, its, in, uh, in all the uh, um, manifestations, the daily manifestations that are required from us. So this is the, a bit the response. If you want to change the world, and I think it's time to change the world, we have to assume more responsibilities. And we have to be more conscious of the, uh, of the interdependencies and the different actions that we can put in place. Thanks again. <laughs> I have so many questions that I um, want to ask, but I, I just want to ask a brief one and then um, maybe the next one Stephanie can ask, but I still have one that I just can't resist. Um, so um, when you were talking about respect and um, communication, especially, how do you think um, we can, in a very practical sense, how can we strengthen, strengthen this um, empathetic communication on a societal level because i think everybody has this capacity personally everybody can somehow communicate empathetically mm -hmm. with respect but how can we um uh put this to a higher level to a societal level well we have to have these principled actions we need to have principles in mind we have to act according to principles uh it's not just ethical as i told you is an individual a personal reflection process uh, and how to put it in motion is uh, linking linking with others I mean or what you see it yourself what have we what have we been left with these days computers uh, internet mm. so the internet is transforming ourselves in many ways we have to be able to use these means that we have uh, for good deeds for good practices uh, so interconnecting means that your initiative uh, is just one out of a million hmm? uh, but uh, is valid so you have to be able to connect uh, your initiative with many other initiatives that deal with the same subject it's that is the the uh, the process of creating movements of creating um, of creating uh, societal transformation so until you work at the individual level only, you can make the difference in your sphere, but it's not enough. So the most important thing is to, again, interdependencies, is to connect. It's not to accept passively the fact that we are globalized, this horrible world that was, that was invented, um, and that is part of the past, as I told you. Uh, you should think about the uh, the process of selecting, selecting, that is also exclusive uh, ability of humans and any animals again, to say, uh, I can select what is my prey, I select what is my food, I select what is my company that I want to be with, the book that I want to read. Hmm? Uh, but it's also the selection of the partners that you want to make. Hmm? So you have to think about partnership building. Partnership is not necessarily uh, a dough death. It's not you give me something, I give you something in exchange. Is, uh, uh, is leveraging uh, the uh, results that you can deliver, is raising the level of consciousness, is uh, bringing people together, again, bringing people together, uh, bringing people together for a, uh, a possibility, for a, a plan that you can make together where that is could be a temporary objective or could be a longer term objective. So it's only if you manage to link what you are doing, uh, Leandra and Stephanie right now with other processes outside your rooms and outside our screens that this has a validity, hmm? but you can make it. Uh, it's just that you have to believe in it and, and work accordingly. So not just limit yourself to your home exercise, but think about many other home exercises that are conducted these days and, and how these homes can be connected.
Thank you. <laughs> um, so I was wondering, um, talking about this uh, societal transformation and how, what kind of advice or maybe more specific advice, or practical advice maybe, um, and also based on your past learnings, could you give us potential young trans agents of transformation um, on how to start our own personal transformative journey? What would that be? Your, your transformative journey is, is first of all, accept the beauty that is in yourself. It's not that you have to transform, uh, trying to embellish yourself to make you, you know, beautify yourself more than how beautiful you are. Uh, it's uh, uh, accepting and understanding your values, first of all. You know, a lot of people look themselves in the mirror in the morning, but do they really see what is inside? Probably not. Uh, so you have really to um to understand that you have a, a personal ambition that you do not have necessarily uh, uh, to spell out you don't have necessarily to cry it out you don't have to manifest it but intimately you have to believe in it so uh, to have a firm belief hmm, uh, it, it's a great engine of uh, personal development a great so a firm belief it's something that comes to you from your own culture, your tradition, uh, your family, your personal connections, uh, people that uh, give you gives you give you uh, uh, um, an inspiration. So again, inspiration. Uh, a lot of this inspiration is a personal reflection. So it's not the individual per se that is inspiring. It's you that you are inspired. Uh, so first of all, you have to relate yourself with the emotional element. Uh, we've talked so much about emotional intelligence and so forth. I mean, uh, it's not a big discovery that we have an emotional intelligence. Uh, if you are intelligent, we are emotional, and that's it. There's no need to write books about it. Uh, the 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 most important thing is uh, to um, really look into yourself huh? uh, and see well now i am caged huh? you now you are somehow uh, <laughs> limited in your movement but you're not limited in your mind you're not limited in your fantasy you're not limited in your creation so the point is how can you create or co-create something with others people that you esteem people that you value people that can again give you this uh, um, this this additional energy that we all need huh? and uh, uh, the difficult part is also uh, to endure so it's not so much sometimes to be uh, uh, to be struck by something to be uh, enlightened by something the hard part is to construe to buy, to build uh, to develop huh? uh, and not to abandon your track this is the difficult part um, there are various techniques to do so. So there might be meditation, uh, there might be writing a diary, a writing a, a personal story, uh, having your, your own diary, as I said, or uh, just uh, developing a personal project. Huh? So there are many ways of developing personal projects. And again, consider that uh, a project, even if it intentionally goes in one direction, it also go in different directions. So you sp we spoke before about a compass, mm, and uh, and uh, you know a compass points to different directions. Sometimes even if you navigate in one place towards one place, you cannot go against the wind. You cannot go uh, against one signal. So you have to make tacks. You have to change, uh, and you have to adjust the circumstances. But while you do so, you can enjoy. You can meet other people. You can even change your plan so changing the plan is also we go back to the, the same discourse that i was making before you know changing your judgment be judgmental but be able to change your judgment again this is part of the same concept you can change your plan according to your different uh, 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 different uh, resolutions and different uh, ambitions 
and, and possibilities that you may have at different points in time. Uh, if you want to become a, a, a movie star, and at some point you are a bartender, uh, uh, well, there's nothing wrong in being a bartender. But maybe uh, in reality you wanted to be a bartender and not a movie star. Uh, so the most important thing is that you're enjoying doing what you're doing. And you have uh, fulfillment in what you do. Hmm? Uh, it, it's not the label that makes different as the person. It's the personal accomplishments and, and, and the ability to uh, really uh, you know, assist and help others in, in, in this process. So uh, this, this is something very fulfilling. Um, I think it's important to help others in, in, in our daily practice, in our daily work. Uh, it's not, that does not give you a, a, a retribution and you probably never give, uh, but uh, it gives you more self-consciousness. No? And, and this is something that you have to build, self-consciousness. Uh, uh, so, so look at yourself again in the morning and, and uh, have a scan of, of yourself and say, uh, here is who I am today. Am I going to be the same person tomorrow? Maybe not. Something is going to change and you have to accept it and build on that. Thank you so much for the advice. I think we can all very much use that and, and Maybe practice it that. Sense, but but <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just... Uh, it's a personal tip. Mm. Well, it's great. And uh, I think we, I'll take that to my heart and practice, it, practice that regularly. <laughs> Leandra, you have another question, I think? Um, yes, I have one very last question, but I will also take this advice, definitely. <laughs> it was very inspiring to hear. Um, my last question is kind of separate from what we have talked about before, but since we are doing these interviews as a series on knowledge and learning and uh, co-creation and also home i have this one question that combines that i ask everybody um, because it combines uh, the concepts of home of wisdom and of learning from others so i wanted to ask you um, what is one thing that you learned from your mother uh, but who doesn't learn from from his own mother uh, Kindness, for sure. Uh, kindness and and uh, and and uh, I think the 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 sense of belonging, hmm? belonging uh, to uh, a personal tradition, family tradition, uh, to uh, the. Um, uniqueness that is in all, all of us. Huh? So I think that uh, my mother in particular uh, uh, brought me up to uh, concepts of, of uh, um, you know, dignity, as I said, as the most important thing. Uh, and and uh, uh, there was a, a saying that she probably came from, from the family. It said, it's much better uh, if someone uh, is envious of you, then if he has pity of you, you know? And so in a sense, never be uh, in a position, but try not to be in a position where people have pity of you. If they envy you, if they talk about you, it doesn't matter how they talk about you, even badly, it doesn't matter. It means that you, you are, it's a measure of success, uh, of personal success. So the dignity element that is in all of us, I think is something my mother always had because uh, she went through a terrible time in history. Uh, she was personally uh, persecuted, um, and and uh, her father was killed in a in a Nazi uh, uh, camp, uh, and she was left alone after the war. And uh, she wrote a book actually about her experiences uh, when she was uh, uh, old already, and this was a very painful, uh, very painful process. Um, but what emerges out of this book um, is the sense of hope. Uh, even in the, uh, the most terrible situations that we are experiencing in life, there is a sense of hope. Hmm? Uh, there is uh, uh, a 
a day that we know that we're waiting for something that, that will happen. Hmm? Of course, we have to believe in it and we work towards that. But this is what my mother told me and, and uh, advised me to do. Have a lot of personal dignity. Never put your head down. Uh, I mean, look at people in the eyes, straight in the eyes, with respect, mutual respect, and communicate as we're doing now. <laughs> Lovely, thank you very much. Um, okay, now, um, as a conclusion, I think we would go over to the um, home tour, if that's fine with you. This is when I was younger, and I was working in Yugoslavia, during the war in Yugoslavia. I was, uh, a civilian affairs officer, political affairs officer in former Yugoslavia during the conflict in 92. 92. Yeah. Uh, here I want to show you a boat, hmm? a boat at night. Hmm? This is a naive kind of uh, painting that I did long ago, and that is uh, announce, announce the visit. So, uh, you know, uh, it's nothing really, it's some painting done in, a, in in half an hour probably, no more. Uh, and uh, I was living in New York uh, and I had a beautiful apartment near the United Nations overlooking the East River. So you would always see this boat passing by at night. And boat, boats at night, uh, you know, they, uh, they convey some feeling, a special feeling of, it's an announcement of something. You know, it's, it's silent again. Uh, but uh, uh, there are lots of lights. You can see there are lots of lights. Hmm? Uh, so uh, these dim lights at night, uh, they announce something. So if it happens to you to go uh, over a, a bridge or uh, by the sea, and you look at a boat passing at night, uh, it's incognito in many ways, but it also announces a novelty. So uh, a boat at night for me is a very good sign. <laughs> okay, this is the, the living room where, where I live. You know, the most important thing in a, in a home for me is uh, uh, are books. Hmm? So you have to have books. Uh, and uh, I, I think one of your questions that you sent me in writing is that if you have some inspirational book. Uh, I, I want to, to show you a book. Apart from painting books, you know, in history books, that are important. This is a book that I consider important. Uh, it's uh, one of the books that uh, somehow shapes or shape my thinking. Is uh, I can open it with you. Is this the Seven Pillars of Wisdom of Lawrence? I don't know if you read this book. This is a, a special edition, by the way. Uh, it's a very old edition, one of the original edition. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, this book tells you a lot about humanity, uh, tells you a lot about uh, different colors and shades in human thinking. So uh, it, it's one book that I consider a good reading. Uh, uh, along with, uh, uh, along with uh, uh, Voltaire's Candide, that is uh, something I read in French to, to learn French. I can show you something for Alexander, that maybe Alexander would like it. Because uh, here in this garden, there is, uh, there's not many trees, but uh, it's green, as you can see. Mm. It's a small garden, but it's a, a privilege in town. Uh, and uh, here is a, there's an, an old peach tree that died. Huh? And this is what Alexander would like, is that with my daughter, I transformed this tree in, in a tree of desire. Huh? You can see there are lots of decorated corks. Huh? And so you can uh, uncork your future while you put one cork on top of your tree. Huh?